Alright, what's going on guys? Uh, in this video here, I'm going to be doing something I've not seen a whole lot of on YouTube. I want to be teaching you how to make camera packs. Uh, I make professional level ca camera packs for broadcasters on iRacing. Uh, this one here is going to be for Live Sim Racing TV. Uh, link will be in the description to watch the broadcast that it's actually made for. Uh, I hope this video helps you out with any questions that you might have and ho hopefully helps you with maybe your personal streams or your personal broadcast if you're a broadcaster or maybe even uh just you know for you to be able to sit back and watch your own races back over and have the best professional quality cameras available so we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it all right so the first thing you're gonna want to do is you load into a test session or even a replay of the track that you're gonna want to make the cameras for uh, if you're loading into a test session, go ahead and hop out on track, turn, you know, four or five laps. I've turned four laps. You see it over there on the left side of the screen. I'm at Richmond Motor Speedway with the cup car. I went ahead and I turned a few laps out on the track. Obviously, I'm not running a setup that's made for Richmond, so it's not like I made a fast lap around the track. I just made a few laps. I made some nice slow laps. So really and truly, the slower the lap you turn, the easier it's going to be for you to make your camera. So once you get, once you've turned those laps and you've done everything, you want to come back to the replay screen, which is this screen right here. You're going to hit control F12. And I was going to pop up this menu over here on the right side. So you're going to notice that I'm on the scenic cameras. Now that I'm on the scenic cameras, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in right here and now that I have hit control F12, I've brought up this menu over here on the right side. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click group. And now I don't personally like scenic cameras. That's not what I use for scenic cameras. So I'm going to go ahead and click delete. That's going to throw me straight to another camera. So after I get sent to another camera, I'm going to go to the camera that I want to use for scenic. And for me, that's going to be the blimp camera. I have to actually duplicate this camera. One of them is going to be scenic. And one of them is going to be focused on the cars, on the track, in a certain group for things such as wrecks and things like that for the broadcaster. Hey guys, just want to give a quick shout out to Aya Fisciola. He is a promoter of YouTube channels, Twitch channels, Facebook streamers. If you're a streamer or a, or a content creator of any kind and you want to push your channel to that next level or you want to get that channel up and off the ground, check out Aya Fisciola on Fiverr. The link is in the description. Make sure you go check him out. He does fantastic work. He's one of the best in the business. We'll get back to the video. The first thing I'm going to do is now that I'm over here on this camera, I want to go ahead and click right here where it says static FOV. It's the very first one with a slider and I'm going to click zoom on that. You'll notice now the camera's way up in the air and I just want to bring that right back down. So now that I brought it down, I feel like I'm at a comfortable range right there where I can see a decent amount of the field. Maybe even bring it back just a little bit so we can see a little bit more. Uh, so for this one right here, I'm going to run it at about 8.8. .8. Uh, maybe even even that up at an even 9. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to mine that out. And I'm going to hit 9. And you notice it really didn't change much from 8.8 .8 to 9. But I feel like 9 is a pretty comfortable range. And it's on zoom. So it's going to constantly, no matter where it's at on the track, no matter where the blimp is at, it's going to, it's going to keep it right about the same range. And you're able to see right around the track in that area. So now that you've done that, and if you want to rename it, you can rename it right here. And I, I can I can leave that as blimp or I can change it to something else. I'm actually going to just, just going to leave it a blimp for this. I'm going to go ahead and type blimp back in there. Blimp. And we're just going to leave that right like that is for right now. But that what that does, that changes the name of your group. It changes it down here. Now you notice after I hit the delete button on Scenic, Scenic is no longer here. Now I want to create a new Scenic camera. What I'm going to create for a new Scenic camera, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video right here. And I'm going to come right up here to where it says create delete copy and paste I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit copy I'm gonna hit paste now you see that zero pop up right there but you notice this is not red and this is not highlighted so what I want to do is I want to click on this and I want to click on that one that says blimp zero once again now you see that turn red now you're on that camera group and you're on that blimp as long as this down here does not say the same thing as what it does on the original one this one right here you'll notice there's no zero afterwards and there's no zero after that one there you want to keep a close eye on that if you don't keep close eye on that you end up editing two cameras at the same time and you end up messing it up uh, one thing you do not want to do is you don't want to hit the create button right here because you'll notice it changes the name up there on the top right up here where it says name it says new one but you'll notice this right here just says cam blimp and there's nothing after that and there's no change in the name from that one to blimp 
So now if I were to take and change anything over here, it will also change this one here as well. So what you do not want to do is you do not want to do that as much as possible. You do not want to hit create. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and delete the one that says new one. Uh, the reason why I'm deleting that is because we don't need that. We don't want that one. Uh, we might use that feature here in a little bit. And I'm going to show you how to use that one exactly at, at some point in time in this video when I'm creating other cameras for other areas on the track. All right, so now that we have the two blimp cameras, we have blimp and we have blimp zero. We already know that blimp is where we want it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to blimp zero. And you know there's no, you, you notice there's no change because it, it's a different camera, but it's literally copied exactly over from the other one. So we, what we want to do now is we want to change the aspects of this camera. Now this is going to be our scenic blimp. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click scenic. And I'm going to change the name of this from blimp zero to scenic. blimp so now that we have that as scenic blimp i don't even think i spelled scenic right i honestly don't know if i spelled scenic right all right so now i've changed that to scenic blimp now i'm going to come back over here to cameras and i'm going to change this right back to static fov then i want to take this where it says at group and I'm going to change that to static. And now the, the camera's not going to follow the car anymore. You'll notice when I hit play, it is no longer following the car. The car is here in a second. You'll see the car just leave the track. And the camera's just going to keep on panning exactly as it is. Now, that's exactly what I want. But I'm going to take it. And I'm going to zoom it way out to where I can see a lot more. This one right here, I'm going to take this where it says orient Y. And what I want it to do is I want it to focus so that your blimp is floating around the track like this but you want your camera to be directly off the side of that blimp. You don't want it to be facing this way. You don't want it to be facing this way. You want it to look straight at a 90 degree angle from that blimp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number here, that orient Y is the orientation off the side of that blimp. You'll notice if I move it left, it looks to the left. If I move it right, it looks to the right. So what I want it to do is I want it to be an exact 90 degrees off the blimp. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit 90. And now it's going to look directly off the side. Now I'm going to take, and I kind of want to see a little bit more than what I see right here. Now, it might be different for you. It might not be. But I want it to see a little bit more. But I want it to be down lower to the ground. Down here, right here where it says offset X, offset Y, and offset Z. I'm going to use the Z to lower it down closer to the ground. So now I've brought it down closer to the ground. You can see a little bit more of what's going on around the track. But you'll notice the top of it is kind of, it's really close to the top of the screen. Well, now I want to change that to where it's not so close to the top of the screen. And I want to use this Orient P to pitch it upwards. That P stands for pitch, and it's, it pit, it's whether or not it pitches your camera downwards or it pitches your camera upwards and exactly where it's at. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pitch that back up to where I can see now the track is pretty well centered around uh, around the ca camera now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the camera pan around to where I'm looking straight across the track so now that I'm looking straight across the track I want to look at, at both sides you'll notice over here it's pretty well even as what it is over here so it kind of it kind of messes up a little bit from what I was aiming for and what I was looking to show you but what you want to do is now that you're looking straight across the track you know right here's pretty much center of the track and I'm looking right straight across you know this is just about horizontal with the top of my screen up here you're going to want to make sure you're centered you want to look at both ends of the track you want to make sure you're as centered on the track as you possibly can once you're centered or once you're even with the track once you're even with the straightaways there which we pretty much already are if you are not what you want to use is you want to use your offset x and your offset y and what this sort of what this does is this moves the camera left moves the camera right This moves your camera forward, and this will move your camera backwards. So your offset X is going to be your left or right. Your offset Y is going to be forwards and backwards. Now, that's not always going to be the case. Depending on where your blimp is, that might line up differently. Your offset Y might be your left and right, and your offset X might be your up and down. It all depends on the direction that the camera is facing. So now, what you want to do is you want to let the camera go ahead and pan. If you don't want to wait on the camera to pan, what I do a lot of times is I know I've been in the sim long enough that I can rewind to where I'm facing the track at a different angle. 
Now remember, I used Orient X to set left and right the first time based on where I was looking down it from the front straightaway. Now I'm over here on the turn, my orientation is facing a different direction, so I need to use the different offset. So now I got to make sure that I am facing as close to straight this way as I can, which is a little bit difficult when you have a sweeping front front uh, straightaway, but I still want to make sure I'm as close as I possibly can. So what I'm going to aim for is, first of all, making sure that I'm set as square as I can with the track and I'm gonna say it's probably right about there what I'm gonna aim for is I'm gonna look for some kind of marker that I can use as the center of the track over here now mind you this this side here sticks out way further than this side here so it's gonna be a little bit to the right of the screen well if you don't want that now you're gonna use the orient P and you're gonna send it to the left or your offset Y and you're gonna send it to the left if you want to center this up and I'm gonna look I'm going to take a look at this over here to the edge, and I'm going to take a look at this right about the same spot over here to the edge. Well, now I've pretty much, in a sense, I've got a center based on where where the furthest parts out are on my straightaway. And I don't want to go off this right here because you're kind of you're almost bubble glassing it. You're almost fish eyeing the your spectrum here based on your distance and your zoom from your static field of view. Now, for what I'm doing, I want this to be more with, I'm looking at this right here. You see there's a little notch right there in the grand sense. I'm going to use that as my center. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that one over here. And I usually use the center of the E and the S on test. For my center, you might need to find something else. So now that's pretty well centered right there. So now I'm going to let the camera pan. I'm going to make sure that everything looks square. Uh, but I'm going to do this and rewind that way I can watch it all the way around and I can make sure that I can see everything using rewind I can see it a little bit quicker So now everything looks good on my scenic blimp. It's exactly what I want I've checked this little box that says is scenic group So now that is my new scenic camera anytime There's not a car on track or if I just want to go to where I can see everything and I'm just looking at a scenic view I now am using this So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and click save I'm going to come over here where it says track cam, and I'm going to go ahead and minus this out. Now for me, I'm making this one for a broadcast company called LSR TV. Now, like I said, link will be in the description for that if you want to watch the broadcast this is used on. And I'm going to go LSR TV, and I'm just going to name it Rich for short, Rich 2021, and I'm going to click save. Now I'm not done. But what I've just done was I have saved it and I've got my files now. No, no matter what I do, my scenic blimp and my at car blimp are not going to change. Now you'll go here, you click on blimp, and now you see that the blimp has not changed from what I set it to before. Now the next thing I want to work on is I'm going to come up here to TV1. I'm going to look at TV1. I'm going to see if it's exactly what I'm looking for. Now what I'm looking for with TV1 is I want to turn this one into a focus camera. I want it to focus on one car at a time. And here's what I'm going to do for that. So I'm going to take, you'll see right here, I've got a decent shot of the car. I'm going to come up here to where it says aim, aim type, and I'm going to point that at car. Now it's pointing at the specific car that I have selected. Down here where it says aperture, I'm going to change that to F slash 1. And what this aperture does is it changes how many objects or how many items are in focus. So the lower the number, the less that are in focus. If I change that to F slash 1, it focuses directly on the car and everything else around it is going to kind of blur a little bit based on the distance from the camera, based on the speed of the car, and based on whether or not you want it in focus. So now I have just the car in focus. I have aim type at car. I'm going to go ahead and from this, without unpausing, I'm going to go down to the next camera. What I did there was I just clicked from over here on the cameras, con camera controls where I was at. I clicked on group and then I clicked on the next camera. We were on this one and now we're on this one here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click camera. I'm going to change this one to F slash 1.0. I'm going to come up here to aim type. And I'm going to hit at car. Now I'm going to go on to the next one. I'm going to go cam tv one underscore zero two that's the next one in the list i'm going to go aperture is going to be f slash 1.0 i'm going to change i'm going to change at type to at car and now everything's going to be focused directly on that car now i want that zoom to be just a little bit further on that one i'm going to come back over over here and i'm going to check this one here 
And I want to be zoomed just a little bit closer. We'll come back up here to the first camera, the one that is actually in the scene selection to where we are at. And I'm going to zoom that one in just a little bit further. Give a quick run through, make sure everything's where I want it. Which it is. Okay, so now that camera's going to look something like this. We're going to go ahead and jump back. That camera's going to look something like this. You'll notice we've got a really nice focus on the car. Everything else kind of has a little bit of a blur. If you go in slow-mo, you can see it even better. The car's got a real nice focus on it. The scenery around it, not quite so much. Now we've got a solid focus on the car. Everything looks good. That's exactly where we want it. So now that we've done all that, we're going to go ahead and change the name. This one here where it says TV1. I'm going to change the name of this to Car Focus. So now uh, the producer from LSR TV is going to know, to know that this one here is to focus on a specific car. Now the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to TV2. And you see TV2 is kind of a, uh, it's kind of an infield camera view. It's got some distance. You can see some of the action going on around the track. Uh, yes, I'm still in slow motion. I can, I can unpause that and speed it up a little bit. We can see some of the action going on around the track, but then there's views like that where a lot of it's blocked out by the scenery. And that's really not actually the end of the world. That'll actually create a little bit of realism to it. So TV2 for right now, we're not going to mess with. What we're going to do is we're going to pause this once again, and we're going to go to TV3. Now TV3, you notice it only has one camera, but look at how far it's zoomed out. Now this is the one I'm going to use to make the main race camera. Now what I want to do to make sure it's the main race camera, and I want to make sure that all these cameras are actually coming from a specific point. I want to make them come from a realistic position. I don't want them to look like they're floating out over the air. So I'm going to come over here to camera. And down here where it says camera edit settings, and this one here says camera view live, I'm going to click that drop down menu, and I'm going to click wide. Now I can see the camera. This right here is your camera on the screen. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to move this camera. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my WASD to quickly and easily move the camera. I'm going to bring that camera back. You'll notice that camera was right out on the very edge of this ledge right here. I'm going to bring it right back to where it was. I'm going to stick with the same position that it was in. And no, this is not the camera that we are looking at here. That's not where it used to be. That is a different camera. Uh, what that one is there for, I mean, it was in the same position as what this one here was, but it was not the same camera. So I'm going to take, I'm going to move this one to right here. And I'm going to lower it down. I usually go off these rings. You see the shattered ring right there. Uh, the camera is not quite in focus, but that is quite all right. I'm going to use those camera rings to make it a tripod. There we go. Now it's in focus. To make it a tripod height. And I'm going to bring it up just to where it disappears. So you show it right there. I'm going to bring it down. And we're going to call that the, a tripod height. Now I'm going to move it forward just a little bit instead of from back here because you see these poles and the lights right over here, well those are going to end up being in the camera shot. I want this camera here to be able to go all the way around the entire track, but I also want it to look real. I don't want it to be back here where you're not going to be able to see past the poles. I want to bring it up here so I can see just past them. So now that I've got the camera where I want it, I'm going to go back to live and I'm going to see what that looks like from this view. Right here where it says static field of view, I already know that I don't want it to be a static field of view because I want it to get, I want to get a close up. I want to be able to see the action on the track all the way around. I don't want to have to look from forever away and be squinting trying to see what the number is on the car and know who I'm watching. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click static or click the drop down menu beside static. I'm going to click zoom. Now you see it's just zoomed way out and that's not what we want. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring this in. We got to unpause that so that we can actually see. We're going to bring this on down. Bring it down just a little bit more. All right, now you can see we can actually see the car. We can see the number, sort of. I don't have the best number on the car, but you can see everything there just a little bit. And we can see everything as it goes all the way around the track. All right, so now that I've got my TV3 cameras, I'm going to use this as a main race. So I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this so he knows what it's for. And I'm going to change it to main race. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a one up there. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not going to put the one up there. We're going to use that as main race. I'm going to go ahead and click save. 
I'm going to click on LSR TV Rich 2021 and I'm going to go ahead and click save. Yes, I want to overwrite and I'm going to do that each and every time I make another group. So now that I've saved that camera, I've got everything ready there. I'm going to come back over here to TV2. Now what I want to create with this one here is I want to create like an infield manned camera. I want every every camera right here to be like a manned camera. I want it to look like somebody standing on the infield inside the wall. And I want it to be kind of uh, human height. So each and every camera in this group, we're going to go ahead and we're switching over to the first one in the group. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go wide. I'm going to bring this one down to a manned height. I'm going to bring it over here to a realistic position. So you're going to be pretty much just inside the wall here. That one's already set to zoom, so now we're going to go to the second one. And you notice this one here is up on this bench. We're actually going to use that. We're going to leave that there because that's right around where a cameraman would be realistically. So remember, if I wanted a tripod or a human height, I'm aiming to just make this disappear by one click. So you see it right there is pretty much ground level. And now I'm going to make it disappear by one click. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next one. That's going to be this camera here, and we're just like the other one. We're actually on a bench right there. We're going to use it once again. So we're going to bring it down. That's right there, even with it, and now it disappeared. I'm going to come over here to camera two, and we have yet another uh, cameraman stand. Now this one here, you'll notice that we can actually see through it right about, I'm not even sure, honestly, where the height is right there I believe is the floor and I'm gonna go like that and that one would just disappear because that looks like it's the floor line right there and you notice it's over top of the plate so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that just like that and that would be all of the cameras there now I want to make sure that they're all set on zoom so this camera here is on zoom this camera here is on zoom this camera here is on zoom and this camera here is on zoom all right, so we've got everything that we want there. We've got it exactly how we want it. We're going to go back to live. We're going to go ahead and jump back to lap number one. And we're going to watch all the cameras come through. And we're going to make sure that they are all in focus. We're going to make sure that they're all good. Now, one thing I just noticed right there. Well, as you see these rails and how they're kind of cut off right there. Well, I don't want them to cut off on the broadcast. I want this to look as realistic as possible. So I'm going to take my near plane bias. It was right here. And I'm going to slide it all the way to the left. And you'll notice that pieces everything back in. If you take it to the right, all everything starts to disappear. And the further to the left you bring it, the more that comes back. Well, I want it to look as realistic as possible. So I'm going to let as much scenery be there as possible. And now I'm going to let the car roll on around. Everything looks good there. I'm going to go ahead and bring the near plane bias all the way over. That way we're not cutting anything off of there either. All right, there's a good one, but a lot of stuff's probably getting cut off. So yeah, I know I know we've got a pole right in the way, but it's all right. It is okay. We're going to go ahead and leave it there because you're only going to be there for a split second when the cars are at speed, and it looks more realistic that way. This one here, I'm sure we're probably honestly missing a lot seeing as it's coming through the pits. I'm going to go back and we'll double check. Alright, so now everything looks smooth. we we'll go all the way around. Now we'll move it back to the next camera. Everything looks good. This one here has already got it all the way up. And that is that camera there. Now, mind you, I just took an iRacing camera and I did small adjustments to it. So I didn't have to change the shot range. I'm going to go ahead and take, and I'm going to rename this one here. Infield manned so all the cameras on the infield and they're about human height they're not way up in the air anymore they're all down at pretty pretty well human heights as if they're holding the camera on the shoulder or they've got it on a tripod in front of them and they're following the car around which is probably what they would have so now i want to move to the next one and for this one here it's going to be tv static right back to where we started 
So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and watch the car go around for a lap and we'll come back to this camera here. We'll know that we've got them all set exactly how we want and then we'll move on to the next group. Alright, so now we've actually come right back around full circle to where we were at. I'm going to go ahead and hit this and TV mixed really isn't a bad one but one thing that we do not want to do is we do not want to use uh, the onboard cameras that we have we have camera gearbox there and we have camera nose there well we don't want to use those so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight them we're on camera gearbox there I want to use this arrow right here to send it out of that group now we're on camera nose we're going to use that arrow once again to send it out of that group and then everything else is going to be pulled out of another group, every other camera in this selection. And then we're actually just going to leave that because pretty much every camera in there has already been changed to a new camera. Now, the chopper view. We don't like chopper view. We don't want chopper view. We're going to come over here to group. We're going to delete. Next thing we're going to do is down here where it says chase. We don't like chase camera. We're going to delete it. Far chase. We don't like it. We're going to delete it. Rear chase. We don't like it. We're going to delete it. Now, everything is set. We've got our cameras. We've got everything set. What we want to do is we're going to go save track. We'll save it again. Now we've got our focus on car, our infield man camera, main race, TV statics haven't really changed, our start line, our photo finish, pit cone, our TV mix. That's a whole bunch of different cameras all mixed into it. Our pit follow. Pit follow two, pit range, which is both of our pit follow cameras, uh, into one to where it automatically change. We've got our blimp camera where it focuses on the cars, and then we've got our scenic blimp. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna go ahead and click on the one, so that way it resets back to the first lap that we turned, and we're gonna go ahead and we're going to run through our cameras so we're going to go to focus car one and we're going to make sure on lap one we're going to make sure all of our cameras are correct All right, so now we've gone through all of our cameras. We've done our checks on all of our cameras. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and double check. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Yes. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my B-roll footage, but you probably don't really want to see that. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. We'll see you next time.